two. Welcome to Fire Freestyle Fridays. I'm your host, Phoenix Tweak. Here today we have the legendary, the sweet, the beautiful Elvi Musica. She is a legendary person in this movement because she gets federal medicinal cannabis, which means the federal government sends her cannabis every month. And we had the pleasure, normal at UCF, of speaking with her today, and she told us her story. And I just wanted to get a little in depth and let everyone out there on the internet know who LB is and get to know her on a more personal level. So uh, here we go. First question I'd like to ask is when did you first get your medicinal marijuana? In October of 1988, I became the first woman to receive federal, federal, federally grown marijuana from the University of Mississippi through National Institute of Drug Abuse and at the Baskin Palmer High Institute. Okay, so the University of Mississippi is growing marijuana and the federal government sends it to you every month. How much does it Well, no, send? actually they, they send it when I come down once a year. Okay. And they, I only want to take, they have sent me as much as they can at one time, but really I feel comfortable with six. I don't want to take more than that. And because I now live in a state where it's legal, I try to combine it so that I have six months supply of government pot and six of Oregonian pot and that way I can mix it and use the stronger pot which is of course from Oregon at night for sleeping with those disorders and the cannabis from the government to keep you moving because it's, it's happy weed, it's Mexican weed grown in Mississippi, it's, it's nice. When it's nice, it's nice. When they send it out, well, that works. <laughs> Okay, so, um, and I understand that you also are a talented musician. When did you start uh, using music to uh, push forward the movement of cannabis law reform? Well, it's funny because I've always loved music all my life, but it was when I was losing my sight that I got very depressed, except when people brought me marijuana. And I was depressed because I couldn't find cannabis. And when I didn't have it, I ended up in the hospital with another surgery at your expense on my hand. Uh, so, so what was the basic question? Uh, <laughs> no, when did you start using oh, start music to So uh, music, the, the music was became apparent right away when I was depressed, but someone would bring me marijuana. I wasn't depressed anymore. I started to write music, and the music was not cannabis or anything like that related. It was just love songs. And, Okay. happy music and whatever came to my head at the time, but it just was another side of me I never knew until I, until I used marijuana, and it was a good thing to know at that time, especially. And I started writing some music that, I, that is definitely for movement, you know, like the war on all, so we will win, or it's time to be kind, things like that. And those I wrote when, once I got out pretty much, a, as I got the first one was when I was going to Tallahassee for my first rally, I did Time to be Kind. The second one, when somebody took the trouble to read me, The Emperor Wears No Clothes, the book that changed my life with Jack Hare, which explained the whole prohibition and why we were in the mess we're in. Right. And after that, I could never stay home. And, and going, to, going to the United States all together was very inspiring for music. I mean, you know, just, you know, at some point in your head, you had to write down. And I was lucky enough to come home and find uh, John Sack, who's an excellent musician. I called him and he go to his little studio and put down a couple of tracks for tapes. That's all we carried. It was just uh, tapes, you know, yeah. cassette tapes. Okay. Yeah, so you got that's, that's you got your started, yeah. you got your medical marijuana, and then you started writing music because yes. you were happier. <laughs> yes. And then. When did you, where does uh, becoming an activist come into that? I know you're a spokesperson. 1990, yeah, 1990. 1990. I was already, I had already been receiving it for uh, a year and a half by the time. And I decided I really wanted to do something but didn't know what. And I started uh, to pray for guidance, really. And I didn't want to contribute to the war uh, because the, the, the drug situation was really bad. That's when we were uh, all over north and all those people were paying drugs to our cities and the whole youth was really into all this cocaine and all that and it was pretty scary and of course most of us including me didn't have a clue why why it was happening or what was happening but that's when I prayed you know that I could find the answers and oh boy they were never 
be careful what you pray for. Right. I found the answers, of course, and once I did, and about we were resting 200,000, 300,000 people, about then now we were about 800,000. But when I found about the two or three, I really understood that if I wasn't part of the solution, I would be the problem. I, and that was a theme of some of the young people used to say that always. And I picked that up from them, from the Green Cappers, to be exact, because it made sense. And because I was receiving medical marijuana from the corporate, at your expense, your taxes are paid for this. I thought the best the only thing I could do is to try to find out all I could and give it back to you so you can make some changes. And I honestly believed then that, you know, five minutes of, I mean, five years of true education would be all we need. Well, I don't know, that was 20, you know, 20 something years ago now. So evidently it's really, of course, we've come a long ways. We now have, what, nine states and the capital of the United States, like you said, the American marijuana. Right. And uh, now there are bills being introduced even in Florida. Florida, where we once established a medical defense with my case back in 1988. So we do have that defense here, but you know, it's very hard to do. Right. And now you're, you're getting new bills introduced, and this is the time to really remind your legislators that they can afford this war at any level, certainly not financially. The prison industry is the legacy of Richard M. Nixon, who left the presidency in disgrace for lack of honesty and full dislike on the Substance Control Act, which, by the way, we do not adhere to in Oregon. Pharmacy boards in many states have voted it out. Marijuana is not a schedule one in those states. Right on. So, and you need to do that. We all need to do that because once those states accept it, then the federal law can go to hell. <laughs> I mean, really, you know, let's stop it. But Obama keeps saying that we have to make him do it, so that really means that all of us have to find a way to present the information we have to his office, to the different departments, to the heads of the different states. Really, really let them know that nobody buys this lies anymore, that we've had it with the five generations of lies and misinformation. A hundred years of torturing our own people has got to come to an end. We would never accept it from anyone else coming in here to do like that, and yet we treat our own like that. Slavery was supposed to have ended a long time ago, yet 12% of the black community smokes marijuana, and 70% of the arrests are black people and Hispanics. Uh, it is definitely just prejudice and garbage and lies and it's up to you to end it because I don't know about you but I do not want to deal with the karma that comes back to us as a nation if we don't stop destroying our homes, our nature, replacing this plant with 60,000 chemical products. That means also destruction, deforestation, that means pollution, that means health hazards that affect your immune systems as you know all-time high of immune system deficiencies and every other one of us or at the very least every three every third person is to have some form of cancer is that going to be you me both of us you but well i uh, i use enough marijuana and i keep my immune system very well protected because of it because that's what it does so i don't think i would be that one but i don't want you to be that one either I think we really have to take responsibility and end this nonsense. Let's end this nonsense. Thank yeah. you, Alvin Kusika. We're fighting the good fight. You can connect with us online. We'll have at the end of the video links to get in touch with all of us, learn more about Elvi Musica and her journey. Um, till then, keep fighting the good fight. We're going to have some music for y'all. So stay tuned. This is Fire Freestyle Fridays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go back to the house. Let's go jam. Let's do it. Yeah. Cut. Head. Medication. Start shaking. Why? Because I'm not medicated. Why? Because they won't. Give it to me even if it can save this existence I'm living in. I know a few who have passed away. Rest in peace, this is all I'll say. But back to the matter at hand, there are people alive right now that can benefit from a tin can full of joints like LV Musica. When we bring that Musica, 
We're gonna show you how we're feeling, Rika. I'm feeling so good, and it's understood why. I take a hit, and I fly with my own system. There is endocannabinoid receptors living in me, medicated. I'm taking a spaceship to a place where I can take this life that I'm dealing with, man. This is the realest shit that I can bring and I can sing, but it comes out like this when I am emotional. On a roller coaster full of wrong turns because they think that they're gonna pull us along around these wrong turns. Man, I'm driving on the right lane, doing the right thing for me. I don't care if it's illegal, I am going to smoke weed. Sorry for the government if you ain't loving it. I'm not signed up to your government. I'm here, United States of America. So that means that I do care for the inhabitants, but you ain't having this. I know some stories, but I don't want to get too gory about kids dying, why kids crying, mothers crying. Let's stop the violence with alcohol. You kidding me? trying to get rid of me I'm trying to be living free but I'm spitting these bars unmedicated I want to take this spaceship to places I never been before cuz I don't know what is in store so I like to explore different things with my body Cush on it. I'm not talking cushion of Bugatti or something like that. I'm riding feet in the ground. You know my sound is coming through smoking loud. Proud to admit it. And if you try me, I will get acquitted. Why? Because medical amnesty. I'm in FLA and I'll tell you we don't play. Activism. We gon' bring it, right? You had your vision, but you lost your sight. Lycoma? No way. In a coma? Okay, but why? Was it medical malpractice? Cause that's the kind of shit I'm not having. Man, fuck it all. Man, fuck it all. Man, fuck them all. Let's rush the wall. White House, bring it down. I'm all right now, but I'm getting loud. Can you smell that? That's in my back pocket. Makes me blast off like a rocket. And I will stop this aggression. Cause I'm best when my system is meshing with the best piff I can find. Man, I'll go for a sativa. I can climb and then I can recline after I am energized. You see my eye looking clear. That's because I have no weed here. I fear for those who need it. Dear people who are being treated as heathens when they can fly higher than the stars, you know I bring these bars for you and you too. Let me show you what you can do. Put down the joint and make it a point to call your representatives so we can help us live the way that we want to because you know we got to take a stand I'm on two feet until I do reach skies blue ahead of me world's turning and I still see Houses burning down, but no one burning tree. My intertwined divine lines in rhymes that provide insight and define the times. Open eyes to realize the lost lives, undropped nines, and how to survive the times. Why I wanna stop crimes, gang signs, poverty lines, and solitary confines. My future is mine, but futures that barely shine have closed blinds. So I'm hoping you'll find how to open your 